Investing in metals like gold and silver opens a world of possibilities, some more obvious than others. The bankability and profitability of silver and gold in a bull market is absolutely irresistible. However, the greatest ability of gold and silver is when they are used together. What's that ability? You actually don't need me to tell you that special ability because I'm pretty certain you'll be able to figure it out. In fact, the first person to comment which ability I'm referring to will receive a Stackers University mug. In the meantime, in order for us to get there, it does require us to discuss salt water, fresh water, estuaries, the fish that live in those waters, and how it can help us frame our stacking strategy and approach. Are you curious yet? Come on, man. When have you ever heard a stacker attempt to connect fish and metals? Well, Dr. Stacker, there is that whole thing about dangerous mercury levels in fish, and you're not supposed to eat certain fish. Duh. Okay, who said that? Get out of here. Get your own channel if you want to be a smarty pants. For the rest of you, all I ask is that you give me a few minutes and take a journey with me like a hike to the San Francisco Hills so that we can look down onto the San Francisco estuary. Estuaries are unique bodies of water where fresh water from rivers and streams mix with salt water from oceans. They are unique places because they serve as a key transition point. We all know that salt water fish can live in fresh water and vice versa. Well, that's mostly accurate because there are a few fish that can do both. Those fish are called your hairline. These fish have the ability to adapt and respond to the changes of the salinity or salt level in the water. Because of this mix of salt and fresh water, estuaries are a very dynamic, ever-changing environment, which requires a level of adaptability from the marine life. This is important because it becomes an analogy for gold and silver investments. Just stay with me. Let's pretend that gold is the ocean and silver is the river water and the estuaries represent the economic conditions or the ever-changing environment that we have to navigate as investors. And at any given point, the water may be saltier or less salty, or at any given point, the conditions might be more in favor of gold or more in favor of silver, just depending on where you are. As a result, your mix of silver and gold stacking should vary, or dare I say, adapt. We'll come back to that later. Now, let's focus on a few fish that live in these estuaries because they can help us understand our individual approach to stacking or as investors. Specifically, I'm referring to the Sacramento sucker, the leopard shark, the Tule perch, and the Chinook salmon. As you can see from the slides, each of these fish will live in different parts of the estuary depending on how salty or fresh the water is. I want you to pause the video for a moment and decide if your stacking was like one of these fish, which fish would you be more like? Now, I know some of you are strictly freshwater or saltwater, meaning only silver or only gold. I get it. Regardless, I still want you to sit back and kind of enjoy this ride because I think it might give you some special insights. In the reality, most of us are like your hayline fish, adapting to the environment, moving back and forth in the estuary depending on the conditions, our own conditions like our age, the available cash that we have to invest, our investing timeline, or just the market conditions. The beauty of this analogy is it reflects what we should be doing as investors. While we may have a preference, it's important that we always adapt our stacking approach in response to the environment. Your hayline fish demonstrate the importance of adapting to your environment. If you haven't figured it out by now, that special ability is adaptability. So pause right now, type in adaptability in the comments. Who knows, you still may be the first person. Even if you're not, the winner may not claim the reward. Go ahead and do that now. And since you're pausing, Go ahead, hit that like button for me. If you've been entertained, you like this contact, love Stackers University, or just want to show support, it really means a lot. It helps keep me motivated. Thank you. Okay, back to the lecture at hand. Perfection is being perfected, so I'm going to let them understand. A little Dr. Dre and Stoop double OG for you guys. Okay, never mind. Too often we create situations where we become dualistic and make things black or white, and we don't appreciate the shades of gray. When it comes to our stacking, we don't have to pick gold or silver. And in fact, we actually need both for very different reasons. For example, given the way silver has fallen and the expected move from the bottom, you might be leaning towards silver now to take advantage of that opportunity. Let's say you stack like a leopard shark. Most of the time, it's gold and a little silver here and there. Could you imagine picking up 100 ounces of silver right now for let's say $21 all in? And remember, a few videos back, I talked about having an investment stack. That's why this investment stack is so important. So let's say you pick up 100 ounces right now with the explicit goal to flip it. What? I know we as stackers and we're not supposed to think like that and we're not supposed to do things like that, but just hear me out. You take $2,100 all in for 100 ounces and let's say silver makes it to 30. That only sounds like a $9 profit, but on a percentage basis, that's a 42% return on your money. In what world would you not be excited by a 40% return on your money in less than a year? 
I mean, you can't go broke making a profit. See, the challenge with dollar cost averaging, especially right now, is unless you're an OG stacker with a super low cost basis, most stackers dollar cost average is likely in the high 20s or 30s. You've heard me say over and over again the importance of charting your purchases. And this is one reason why it's really important. Because if you have to sell or if you choose to sell, you don't have to sell based on your dollar cost average. For example, I have a 100 ounce bar that I bought for someone for $2,100. So if I had to sell that bar with silver at $21 an ounce, that feels very different than having to sell 100 ounces worth of Eagles at $25 an ounce. So let's get into why I took you on this journey and what I want you to walk away with. One, change. Change is the only constant, just like life in that estuary. Thankfully, like the estuary, the change in the metal market is gradual and somewhat easy for us to see coming in the short term. So you have to, to resist this urge, resist that X system, which makes you feel like you need to do something every time you receive new information. That takes me to the second point. Information. As we navigate this world where every day we are bombarded with information, most of you know what I'm about to say, but if all it took was information, we already have everything we wanted in life. It's not a lack of information that holds us back. It's you, it's me, it's we that keep holding us back. The investment vehicle is almost irrelevant. If we don't tend to what's in our head, our emotions and our impulses, the path of investing is just riddled with traps and mistakes and we'll fall into each one of those. And we then have this ability to take a winning investment and make it a loser. Because when we address points one and two, dealing with change and the information, we then can unlock our superpower which is point number three, the adaptability of gold and silver. Like the fish in the estuary, we have the ability to adjust to the conditions, not the predictions, or we will find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. In some ways, I'm agnostic when it comes to silver or gold, because like your hayline fish, our responsibility is to either adapt to match our environment, and meaning like change our locations or change how we're, we're stacking, or die as a result of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I know that sounds a little dramatic. Ultimately, our ability to adapt to change is directly related to how well we have prepared in advance. That's what I try to do with each of these videos, give you something different to consider, a different way of seeing things, a different approach, so that your stacking toolbox is filled with every tool you can need to be a successful investor. So should you be in gold or silver or both right now? Well, that's a decision you have to make, and it really depends on what type of fish you want to be. Right now, I'm stacking more towards gold for stability and the likely recession that is coming. However, if silver hits $16, $17, I'll likely shift more towards silver, not for the long term, but for the ability to do what I mentioned earlier, add some ounces to my investor stack, which would offer me lots of options, because in that previous example I gave you, if silver hits $30, I can take my 40% return and be very happy, or I can let it ride like they say in Vegas. Keep your mind open to adapting your approach based on the market conditions. Silver and gold should be seen as working together, which will allow you to make moves based on the market conditions like the fish in the estuary. You have to decide where you want to be in this estuary, where you want to hang out. I don't think any one place is bad. And the best part is reasonable people can disagree. In the comment section, I want you to share what is your current gold to silver stacking ratio and why. And while I'm not a big fan of the gold to silver ratio, mainly because of the way it's used by people, do you see how shifting your stacking ratio could be related to the gold to silver ratio? Or you can have some fun and tell me what's your greatest stacking ability. Or if you were a stacking superhero, what would be your superpower? My superpower would be the ability to find lowest premiums. Give yourself an A-plus for riding all the way through to the end with me and for being excellent students. Always stack smarter. Never stop learning.